Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Outer Program using Scala. In this video we're going to continue implementing our KD tree. So at the end of the last video we had gotten to the point where we found what dimension we were going to split across. So we had our base case if there weren't enough points. Uh, if there were enough points we figured out which dimension we're going to split across and we said that our split value should be at the median uh, along that dimension. And this is where we paused and we said we'd have to write that that method in this next video. One way to do this, of course, would be to do a sort, but the problem with a sort is then at every level here I'm doing order in log n work, and in order to build the whole tree in n log n time, I have to make sure that whatever I do in here takes no more than order n time, because we're going to do this order log n times because we're continually separating around two. So the question is, how can you find the median of a collection in order in time? And the answer is you do something very similar to a quick sort. So we'll start off by writing what I have here. PS is a sequence of A. And actually, um, I'll call it uh, PS. Right now it's a sequence of A. We're going to change that to make this so it goes faster. And the dimension we're splitting on is an integer. And this is going to return to us a double, which is the value of the median. In addition to returning that double, it is also going to arrange things in the sequence so that everything that is uh, that has a value less than the median value is on one side of the collection and everything that's greater is on the other. And that's why we have to change something up here. A sequence is, well, is basically non-mutable. In fact, if I hover over here, uh, I'm not going to tell us this. Um, this is basically an immutable sequence and I need to be able to move things around. So I want this to be an array of A. Uh, in addition to that, I want to pass in two other arguments. The I'll call them the start and the end. Just like I would if I were doing a quick sort, I pass in the starting index and the ending index. Let's go ahead and make these methods private. So when I first call this, my starting index is 0, and my ending index is the length of my collection. And PS here is going to be, well, the problem is that this is a sequence. I don't want a sequence. I want an array. And I want it so that the array is pushed up to the level of our call for make tree, which introduces an error up here. So I'm going to convert that to an array. No class tag available for A. Array of, well, like that. Syntax better, except this says, hmm, I think I'm going to have to make this. Except the manifest goes on the other side. Now it likes that, and we could probably go to pnts.2 array, and that is all happy. So I'm going to convert the points that are input into an array, um, which of course just allocates an array of references, and each reference uh, points to one of the points that was part of this index sequence here. So what happens in find median? Well, find median is going to work the same way that a quick sort works, except for the fact that it's not going to recurse on both sides. So you might remember that the way that a quick sort works is that it finds the, a picks one element to call the pivot, um, and the pivot is, can be any element inside of the, the collection between start and end. 
Then we're going to move things around so that everything that's less than the pivot is on one side and everything that's greater than the pivot is, is on the other. In a regular quick sort, so I guess we'll pick pivot, move elements. And in a normal quick sort, what would happen then is that we would uh, recurse on both sides. But if I only want the median, I don't want to actually find, I don't want everything in sorted order, I just want to find the median, I don't need to recurse on both sides, I only need to recurse on one side. And uh, calling this median, let's do, uh, actually no, I have my array, I have the full length, so we're, we're good there. Okay. So normally I would recurse on both sides, but in this case I don't have to do that. I can just recurse on one side. Technically instead of recursing on one side, I could actually recurse on, uh, or just put this inside of a while loop because it, it doesn't, it's not branching, it doesn't have to be recursive. I'm going to go with recursion for this implementation though. Uh, will allow me to, to work nicely with, with start and end, uh, etc. Picking the pivot. Okay, so from the, the previous chapter on recursion, you should remember there are good ways of picking pivots and there are bad ways of picking pivots. Right now I'm going to pick the bad way of picking a pivot, and that is just to say that the first element in here is, is the pivot. It's much better if I look at several elements and pick the median of, of those three. Uh, but I'm not going to bother with that as long as our, our points are fairly well um, randomized that won't be a problem and especially because we keep swapping between what dimension we're randomized where we're kind of pseudo sorting them on that should hold up fairly well so so we pick our pivot uh, that and then I'm going to declare the variables that I need so I keep track of a low index, and I'm going to start my low index at zero. My pivot, uh, or sorry, at one, my pivot is at uh, zero. Oops, sorry, not one. Start plus one. My high value is going to be low end minus one. Remember, it's exclusive on that end. And the way that we move things around is we look at the element at low, and if it is less than the pivot, it just stays there and low moves forward. If it is greater than the pivot, it's going to swap up and uh, to the to the high end, and high moves back. So while low is less than or equal to high, what I want to do in here is do a check if ps sub low sub split dim because I'm pulling off the the value on the dimension we're actually doing our split on if that is less than or equal to ps sub start this is our pivot sub split dim in that case I am just going to say low plus equals one. Else, in the other case, well, high is going to be decremented, and before high is decremented, I'm going to swap the element at low with the element at high. So, val temp equals ps sub low, ps sub low equals ps sub high, ps sub high equals temp. Our standard three lines of swap code, and then we can decrement high. And so basically as this goes, the uh, small values wind up accruing on one side of the array, the large values get moved to the other, and the values of low and high move towards each other. As soon as they've passed each other, we have, uh, we've moved everything to its proper locations, and the last thing that we want to do is actually do this swap 
In this case, we're doing the swap of the thing at high with the thing at start. So we're moving our pivot and swapping it with high. And that puts the pivot in its correct location. So now the question is, was that correct location the thing that we were looking for? So if start is equal to the median value, which would be ps.length over 2, well, in that case, we are done. And I'm going to go ahead and return the value of ps substart subsplit dim. Else, well, what if that's not the case? So the thing at start was not the value that, uh, that we wanted. So start then either has to be before this value or it has to be after this value. So I guess let's go ahead and let's put in some ifs here. If start is less than ps.length over 2, and this should not be start, this should be high. Because that's where the pivot wound up being at the end. If it's less, well then that means that we only care about the things that are above the pivot. Because the median is located, if we picture the array uh, out here, the, the pivot wound up being to the left of, of where the median is, so we only care about the stuff that's to the right because that's where the, the median is going to wind up being. So then I want to call my recursive function, find median. I want to pass it the same array, the same split dim. My start though now is high plus one and the end stays the same. If it's not, if it's not equal and it's not less, well then it has to be greater. In that case I'm going to do a recursive call again. I'll put this on the turn or recurse. But for this side we wind up with start and high. Once again, the upper end is exclusive. The pivot is in the right place, and we know the pivot is not the thing that we're looking for, so therefore we can stop considering it, and we just pass that through. And now this code is complete for finding the median. It has not been tested. Uh, we'll have to come back and do that, but that remains for another video. And in the next video, we will go ahead and finish up this work here after we've found the split value. So we know the dimension, we know the value, and the things inside of our array have been reordered. Now we just need to go and actually produce a node that can be returned.